Hello and welcome back to the Greg Compound. On this video, if you guys have been following that golf cart modification video, we've got pretty much everything done. So I'm going to show you all the modifications that I've made to it. Very little of it is stock up underneath anymore. Primary goals were power, power enough for four people, a couple deer, maybe a wagon behind it for hunting, and also speed, get it faster than the original stock cart. Those two things are very important, and of course ground clearance and all that, which you saw from the other video. So we're going to get right to this thing, show you all the stuff that I did to that cart. Before you forget, hit that subscribe button right up there and check out some of my other videos when this one's over. Alright, I'm going to show you a couple things about this cart. Pretty much got everything done to it I want done to it. That's an Alltrax DCX500 electronic speed controller. That thing is programmable. You can make the cart act a lot differently with that controller on it. Um, that controller made the original motor a lot faster until it melted down, which that really wasn't part of the plan, but I was going to replace it anyway. I've got number two weld and lead cables on it now. You'll see that little red piece right here. That is my solenoid. That's 400 amp solenoid. There'll be links in the description to all of this. And down there is the new heart. That is a custom built motor from Electrical Motor Products. There'll be a link to that down below. That thing just did fit without any modifications to the cart. I'll show you a shot from underneath of that. There's that motor there. Doing this work is actually fairly simple. Just following the directions, the wiring diagrams, and your existing wiring from the cart. Don't worry about that wire hanging down right there. That's to my auxiliary battery that I use for running lights. Just keeping that in the bag well there. So that's the motor. Now when I wired up the cart, the cables that I bought, the set did not come with instructions and I missed a very important piece that I didn't know any better. I'm going to show you that. Right there, that beige box is the onboard computer for the golf cart. The old ground wire ran from this terminal, and a fuse came with that speed control by the way, through that hole in that computer. Now I didn't know why that was there, so I just bypassed it, went right on around it, and then the ground comes up through there, connects to the speed controller where it goes. Problem is, that's actually like an amp probe, that little hole. There it is on the inside. That computer senses the current when it's charging, so the computer can tell the charger when to turn on and off. So by bypassing it, the cart won't charge. So I've got to fix that, and I'm going to show you the fix that I've got for it right now. All right, and I got this off the Buggies Gone Wild website. It's a great bunch of guys there. This is available commercially, or you can make your own. Most of the golf cart places that sell wire kits do have this. It's just a, a stud you're going to make to go through that computer and connect the cables. Now this cable is too long for the other side of the cart, but I'm just going to wind it all up. What you got is you got a bolt. This is a 5 16 by 3 inch bolt, two nuts, a lock washer, fender washer, and rubber washer, and something to insulate where that bolt goes through the computer. And I'm just cutting these little pieces of plastic. Uh, like covers and slipping them over there. Through bolt that and then hook the ground cable up on the other side. These cables will not pass through that hole. So I'm going to get that done now. Alright, got that done. So you can see I got the bolt through there. And this is not tight through that computer. Those rubber washers are just snugged up a little bit on each side. Now the nuts are tight on the cables. Wish I didn't have this long loop of cable, but it won't hurt anything. It's pretty easy to work with. I'll trim those ties in a moment. And on the inside, that's what it looks like going through the computer. So now the computer will be able to read the voltage properly, and I don't have anything bypassing it, so the charger should work a lot better. Now, this cart was charged up. There's 51 volts on it. Go ahead and turn it to run. And uh, that extra wiring mess over there is for some auxiliary lights I got. Also, I wanted to show you, on the motor, there's two little skinny wires. These right here. Those are actually on the thermostat that uh, Chuck put in for me at EMP, Electrical Motor Products. That thing will 
close the connection at like 330 degrees or something and I've got it wired from auxiliary battery and the fuse box to idiot light right here so if that light comes on there's also a buzzer I'm playing with but if that light comes on I know I need to stop before I damage that motor now he has this thing designed with that motor down there it shouldn't have any heat problems unless I hit somewhere around 35 miles an hour and if that were to happen in this cart you'd probably die because with that lift and tires on it it's not really very safe at 25 miles an hour so we're going to see how fast it runs now with all the big wires on it and everything done in a full charge and I'll show you that here in just a second but the thermostat is supposed to keep from happening what happened to me with the original motor which wouldn't have mattered I was going to replace it anyway so let's put the seat on give this thing a test run old Gabe the wonder dog is going to watch us got our speedometer app on the cell phone ready to go and we're going to have to turn the cart forward that always helps pardon the camera work there stay he likes to chase the cart Whew. sit sit down stay you stay there Reset that speedo so we can see it. Maybe it'll stay this time. Whoops. See what happens. Plenty fast. Spinometer fell again. So that's it. That car is plenty fast. They can make a motor at Electrical Motor Products for any speed you want. They built this one to my specs. I said I wanted it to be able to hit between 20 and 25 on smooth surfaces, but have a lot of torque for four people pulling a wagon with some deer in it, yard work, whatever. And that's what I got. They did a great job on that thing. I'm real happy with it. So I'm going to button this guy up and uh, put the seat back on. Take a final picture of it and finish this video up. But all the links below will be to the accessories that I've added to this thing. There's pretty much nothing stock except the forward reverse switch. You do not have to change it on this year cart. So that's the same. The batteries I haven't changed. Uh, don't need to. They work fine. They're the ones that came with the cart used. Everything else has been replaced, and it's real strong. Great hunting buggy. Can't wait to check it out for the range. See how far I can drive it on the full charge. So that's pretty much it on a golf cart video. Check out some of my other videos while you're on the channel. Hit that subscribe button up there. Give me that thumbs up like button. We'll see you next time.